Hi everyone, welcome back to Unorthodox Cricket. Now what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to take a quick look at some of the headlines circulating around the cricketing world. So first up, the uh, whole Zimbabwe cricket dilemma at the moment, bit of a sad situation there. Uh, then we're going to take a look at the Euro T20 Slam. Now this one's crept up on me a bit, didn't really know much about it until today. Um, thirdly, we're going to take a look at the England and Ireland Test Match squads um, and just that one-off game they've got there. And then finally, just a quick look at the uh, World Cup overthrow situation, um, the five runs as opposed to six runs, um, which has been debated about, um, but Simon Torfall's come out and said that it should have been five runs. So we'll just take a quick look at that um, and some potential fixes to the super over fix for a tied one-day international. Now, starting off with quite a sad story here, um, Zimbabwe have lost their membership uh, as part of the ICC. So the ICC have revoked that based on uh, political issues. Um, now, I'm not huge on the politics that happen in Zimbabwe, but obviously the country's not in a great state. But what's really sad is for people going through already a hard time, um, a lot of people would rely on cricket to bring them a bit of joy uh, in tough times. And now that Zimbabwe have had their membership revoked, um, that's, that's really not going to help the country. It doesn't help the cricket. Um, and it's just a, it's a real sad story. So basically the ICC have stripped all funding from Zimbabwe and have removed them from playing any ICC events. Um, now the huge concern for them was they thought any funding they were providing was going to be given to the government and the government might not redirect that to the players and to the development of the cricket. So yeah, just it's just sad that a country has, has gone that way and, and things just aren't working. Um, as they should. Um, potential fix, maybe the ICC could pay the players directly and put in their own sort of program into the development of cricket in Zimbabwe. Now I'm not sure how difficult that is, um, that's just me being optimistic and looking for a potential fix there. But it's just sad to see Zimbabwe disappear from the scene. Puts a lot of guys out of work. Um, guys who are playing, playing international cricket for years now are they forced into retirement? Um, nobody really knows. They don't know how long this ban's going to last. They don't know if they'll ever play international cricket again. So guys in limbo, it's just it's just sad all around. Um, they're due to play a T20 uh, tri-series in Bangladesh in September. So that's obviously not going to happen. And then obviously with upcoming T20 uh, World Cup events, that's probably not going to happen either. So it's just a sad story all around. Zimbabwe have been around cricket for... For years they've been in and out, um, huge politics throughout the whole time they've played international cricket, but it's just sad that politics interferes with sport, especially when sport is such a good outlet for, for nations going through tough times to, to find a bit of joy. So it's really sad, I really wish the ICC could just direct the funding straight to players and sort of get some help in around the development, take the government out of the whole situation, but... I'm not really sure how real realistic that is. Um, as I say, I'm not uh, too up on the play with the politics, but it's just a sad story all around. Now, next up is the Euro T20 Slam. Now, I hadn't heard much about this until today. It's really sort of gone under the radar. Um, but they've announced that there's going to be a tournament made up of six teams uh, hosted in Amsterdam, Edinburgh and Dublin. Um, and it's a T20 tournament. Um, the six teams are sort of made up of current and ex-international players, as well as guys from the Netherlands, Ireland, um, and Scotland. So it's going to be a really interesting competition there. Um, big name players like Owen Morgan, Brendan McCallum, Martin Guptill, Shaheen Shah Afridi are all signed up, Rashid Khan. So there's a number of quality players there. And just looking at the squads, they all look pretty evenly balanced. So it looks like it's going to be a really good tournament. Um, but the real big thing here is just exposure in those countries, so Scotland, Ireland uh, and the Netherlands. Just a bit more promotion for cricket as a global game. So hopefully this can really lead on to those nations getting a bit more involved in cricket and just promoting a stronger brand of cricket across the world. So it's pretty exciting, a wee competition I didn't know too much about. Uh, it's happening between August 30 and the 22nd of September. Um, and yeah, the teams are pretty balanced. Um, it's going to be an interesting competition and just a bit of extra cricket for the fans to watch. So it's, it's good for the game and it's good for the viewers. So really excited for this one. So hopefully it's a success and can continue to grow each year. Now just taking a brief look at the one-off test match between Ireland and England. Now for me this is going to be really interesting to see if Ireland can be competitive against England. And for England it's great Ashes prep. Two guys I'd like to take a quick look at. Lewis Gregory, um, I hadn't heard a lot about him, but I've just had a quick look at his stats. 
Uh, he's got 257 wickets at an average of 25, so pretty handy with the ball. Um, and you'd say he's a, a bowling all-rounder. Um, he scored 2,389 first-class runs at an average of 21 with 200. So very much a bowling all-rounder, if you can call him an all-rounder. I guess the verge of 20 to 25, you can be classed as a, an all-rounder. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if he gets a shot. Um, and then if he does, if he can push for a potential Ashes uh, spot. But for me, the real exciting one is Jason Roy. Now, we all saw how dominant he was through the World Cup. Um, really set the tone, uh, went out there with intent, attacked the bowlers, put them under pressure, um, and I'd like to see him bring that same approach to the Test Match Arena. Now, a lot of people would say, it's Test Cricket, you've got time, you don't need to do that. But we've seen on a couple of guys, Verinder Sawag, Brendan McCullum, they've gone out at the top, put the bowlers on the back foot, um, and it really can swing a test match uh, either way. So I'd like to see him go out there and play really aggressive, try and strike it over 100, really put the bowlers under the pump, and that could potentially be a key for England uh, in the Ashes. But not too much more to say about this. As I say, I'd like to see uh, Ireland put up a real fight and Jason Roy to go big. Um, outside of that, it's a good chance for the English players to get a bit of form heading into their Ashes, which is going to be very competitive. Um, and that's going to be a hard one to pick, but I'll, I'll do a video later on that um, and work where I think that series might head. Now, finally today, guys, there's been a whole lot of talk around the World Cup final um, and that massive moment in the game where Martin Guttwell threw it in, hit the bat of Ben Stokes and ran off to the boundary for four. Now, we all know that was given us six runs, um, but there's been a lot of talk lately, uh, particularly from Simon Torfall, former ICC umpire, that that should have been five runs. And that's due to the point uh, where they cro where Martin Guttman threw the ball, the batsmen hadn't crossed. However, if they had crossed, then it should have been six runs. So that's really interesting. Um, obviously a mistake from the on-field umpires, but you can't really blame them in such a pressure situation. Um, they probably should have checked the rule book. Um, but yeah, it's heat of the moment, such a massive game, a lot of things going on. You can't really uh, put that on them. Um, I've also seen a bit of chat around um, how they should change the result of the game due to that throw because New Zealand were in the box seat. Um, but that's just all nonsense. Um, there were still two balls left, so you can't say that, I think it was Adil Rashid who was at the other end, you can't say that he wouldn't have put those two balls out of the park. So... To try and change the result based on that is absolute nonsense. Um, but yeah, obviously a small mistake. Um, <laughs> did play a big part in the game, but that's cricket. Um, th those things happen. Um, I don't think many people would have been aware of that rule. I personally wasn't. I thought if they'd completed, well, they're in the process of completing two runs, then you get the two plus the four, so six runs. Um, I had no idea about the crossing at the time of the release of the throw. So... I don't think many people would have known about it. I dare say the umpires may not have even known themselves. They obviously didn't think about it in the moment. So, yeah, that's that. Now, the final obviously went to a super over. Um, now, for me, to go to a super over at the end of 50 overs is probably slightly short. As we see in the T20 format, going to a super over is probably fine. Um, but if you've played six, seven hours of cricket and you've played 100 overs, to go to one deciding over is probably a bit limited. I'd like to see that potentially move to a five over super super overs. Um, it just gives a bit of balance, a bit more time. Um, one over to settle a, a hundred over game is probably a bit short. Um, so that'd be a really interesting option there. Uh, they have had a bowl off in the past, wasn't a fan of that, but they obviously do need to sort of make a change there. I just think a super over for 50 overs is probably a bit light. Um, fine for T20s, but Probably something to look into for the future. If you guys have any ideas uh, how they could decide a one-day game tied at the end of 50 overs, um, let me know. For me, uh, a, a five-over split is probably a better mix for that whole situation there. Um, but that's all for today, guys. Um, let me know what you guys think of this cricketing news. Obviously, sad times for Zimbabwe. Uh, exciting times for England and the Ashes and a couple of guys making their debuts. So... That's there, the Euro League, um, and then the World Cup stuff. So let me know in the comments your guys' thoughts. Uh, but thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow.